It all began with the Aurochs. We were having breakfast in our rooms at college. Simon was presiding over the table with his accustomed critique on the world as evidenced by the morning's paper. Oh, splendid, he sniffed. It looks as if we've been invaded by a pack of freeloading foreign photographers keen on exposing their film and who knows what else to the exotic delights of dear old Blighty. Lock up your daughters, Bogno Regis. European paparazzi are loose in the land. He rambled on a while, then he announced, Hold on, have a go at this. He snapped the paper sharp and sat up straight, an uncommon posture for Simon. Gawk at what? I asked idly, this thing of his reading the paper aloud to a running commentary of facile contempt, scorn, and sarcasm, well mixed and peppered with his own unique blend of cynicism, had long since ceased to amuse me. I had learned to grunt agreeably while eating my egg and toast. This saved having to pay attention to his tirades, eloquent though they often were. Some bewildered Scotsman has found an aurochs in his patch. You don't say. I dipped the corner of my toast triangle into the molten center of a soft-boiled egg and read an item about a disgruntled driver on the London Underground refusing to stop to let off passengers, thereby compelling a train full of frantic commuters to ride the circle line for over five hours. That's interesting. Apparently, the beast wandered out of the nearby wood and collapsed in the middle of a hayfield twenty miles or so east of Inverness. Simon lowered the paper and gazed at me over the top. Did you hear what I just said? Every word. Wandered out of the forest and fell down next to Inverness. Probably from boredom, I replied. I know just how he felt. Simon stared at me. Don't you realize what this means? It means that the local branch of RSPCA gets a phone call. Big deal. I took a sip of coffee and returned to the sports page before me. I wouldn't call it news, exactly. You don't know what an aurochs is, do you? He accused. You haven't a clue. A beast of some sort? You just said so yourself, I protested. Really, Simon, the papers you read. I flicked his upraised tabloid with a disdainful finger. Look at these so-called headlines. Princess linked to an alien sex scheme. And shock horror weekend for Bishop with massage parlor Turk. Honestly, you only read those rags to fuel your pessimism. He was not moved. You haven't the slightest notion what an aurochs is. Go on, Lewis, admit it. I took a wild stab. It's a breed of pig. Nice try. Simon tossed his head back and laughed. He had a nasty little fox bark that he used when he wanted to deride someone's ignorance. Simon was extremely adept at derision, a master of disdain, mockery, and ridicule in general. I refused to be drawn. I returned to my paper and stuffed the toast into my mouth. A pig? Is that what you said? <laughs> Okay, okay, what pray tell is an aurochs, Professor Ronson? Simon folded the paper in half and then in quarters. He creased it and held it before me. An aurochs is a sort of ox. Why, think of that! I gasped in feigned astonishment. An ox, you say? It fell down? Oh my, what won't they think of next? I yawned. Give me a break. Put like that, it doesn't sound like much, Simon allowed. Then he added, only it just so happens that this particular ox is an ice age creature which has been extinct for the last 2,000 years. <laughs>